Okay, this is a quick reply for our conservative atheist. Um, sorry if I look like I just crawled out of bed. It's probably because I kind of did just crawl out of bed. Um, so, I guess your biggest point in this video is that there are fewer women in a specific engineering class of 50. And you're right, it's a definitely, it's a huge difference. As you say, it's like May 2 or 3 in a class of 50. Um, but the problem is, this doesn't really represent um, uh, female ability necessarily, because as long as we're seeing changing trends in uh, female representation in engineering classes, there's very strong evidence that this is not biology, because biology does not change on a decade time scale. Um, and when you can track uh, differential uh, performance in women in math, engineering, physics, and other areas which they've traditionally been underrepresented in, you see that there is not um, a performance gap necessarily. There may be, but until we see um, some evidence for it, I'm certainly not going to make the statement that there is. So I'm going to direct everyone to this uh, New York Times article. And the New York Times article is actually just uh, basically reporting on a um, report put out by the National Academies, which is about uh, changing opportunities for women in science. I want to quote this really quick here, just so you have an idea of what I'm talking about. Um, it says, U.S. girls have now reached parity with boys, even in high school and even for measures requiring complex problem solving. It goes on to say that um, And this is talking about uh, women's, oh, and here we go. The Wisconsin researchers said, although girls are still underrepresented in the ranks of young math prodigies, they said, that gap is narrowing, which undermines claims that a greater prevalence of profound mathematical talent in males is biologically determined. The researchers said this and other phenomena provide abundant evidence for the impact of sociocultural and other environmental factors of the development of mathematical skills and talent and the size, if any, of math gender gaps. As you can see by their last statement, they're not saying that there are not gender gaps, but until we stop seeing these changing trends in performance, we can't say that there are. And similarly, I mean, look back a hundred years. You didn't see uh, women's representation in biology the way you do now, and now um, there are more women uh, graduating with biology degrees than men. So, I mean, does that snapshot of uh, right now mean that maybe women are better at biology than men? Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, but I don't think that there's enough evidence to say. Similarly, you take a snapshot 100 years ago, does that mean 100 years ago women were terrible at biology? Biologically, um, ironically enough. I don't think so. Um, and so until we see uh, some kind of convergence of these trends to a single to a single level, there's no way you can be saying that, well, this particular sort of anecdotal kind of evidence where you say, oh, well, this single data point shows, well, a single data point really doesn't show. So I think that's kind of a, a misunderstanding of the information here. Um, in terms of your uh, experiences of women in social situations, I'm not going to, I'm not going to call into question your personal experiences because I think it's kind of inappropriate. Um, how often people call into question other people's personal experiences. Um, those have not been my experiences of women in general. And again, this very likely has to do with, uh, you know, the people I hang out with. You know, I hang out with other college students, so if I'm hanging out with women, they're probably women who are choosing to educate themselves, uh, women who are in college. And often, since, I mean, as a science major, the classes I'm in are, you know, higher math, uh, computer programming courses, um, microbiology, and biochemistry, um, these are the women that I meet. And so there, I'm sure that there's some difference in terms of uh, a self-selecting group where I'm meeting women who are more likely to be uh, happy to choose things for themselves and happy to uh, make decisions for themselves. Um, so my main point, though, is I wanted to mention this article 
by the National Academies. This isn't just me saying that things are changing, women are smart. I mean, this is, this is, uh, these are statistical trends and they are uh, being shown in this article. And I'm not going to go into all the, um, all, all the reasons why it's a pretty convincing article. Instead, I'm going to link it for you. I'm going to link both the New York, New York Times article and I'm also going to link the um, actual study by the uh, National Academies. And the article, or the report by the National Academies is a 500-page article, but it has a nice uh, sort of couple pages that's its a uh, press release that was released along with it, which is, I don't know, at least it's an interesting summary without having to read, you know, 500 pages of what I assume is probably a lot of statistics. So anyway, uh, you can look for that link in the annotations, I'm sure, sidebar, I'm going to try and put them in both. So uh, yeah, anyway, those are, that's pretty much what I have to say about the argument that underrepresentation shows biological difference.